guys, I hope everyone is having a lovely day today. This is going to be my second installment in the Coffee Time series that I wanted uh, to start. My first one I will link down below. Um, completely different subject from this one. That one is about adopting my greyhounds. I am going to do a second video um, about my greyhounds um, just because I find it really fun and I love talking about them. But for uh, this topic, or this uh, installment, I wanted to talk about something a little bit, or quite a bit more serious. Um, and to be honest, I don't even know if I want to post this. It feels really awkward even talking about this. Um, so by the title, you know that this video is going to be about mental health. And the thing that, A, I haven't really planned, you know, or have any notes about what I'm gonna say. So this might sound a little bit rambly and disorganized. I apologize if it does come across as that. Um, B, I don't want this video to come across as like a pity party. I'm going to be sharing personal stuff about myself that I haven't really shared, well, on the internet, A, first of all. And to be honest, a lot of people that I know, you know, like only a few people in my life really know about what I'm about to share. So, yeah, if you know me on a personal note, this might, or a personal like level, this might come as a bit of a shock to you. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't want this to be like a pity party. Like, oh, Allison, I feel so bad for you, da 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 da, because that's not what it's supposed to be about at all. This video is supposed to um, get a discussion going and maybe raising awareness. And I'm just using my personal struggles as a uh, catalyst for conversation and not for feeling sorry for myself, okay? So, um, I've noticed these past few months on, even like in my personal life and where I live, people are committing suicide. Um, in my hometown, my hometown's not super large by no means, um, four high school kids have killed themselves within the last two months, three of them were at the high school that I attended, um, and then where I went to university in a separate town, three kids have, uh, committed suicide, one just this past week, um, and on a larger note in, uh, I don't know if you know where Attawapiskat is, it's a native reserve in Canada, again, I'm not 100% sure where it is, please don't judge me for not knowing that, but just two days ago, they had 11 attempts in one night, and the community's not huge to begin with, so that's just ridiculous, and it's sad, and obviously, like, the community has declared a state of emergency, because this is, again, really, really sad, and something obviously needs to be done, so kind of, I don't know how to say this, but you're constantly seeing just people committing suicide and it's just the rates are going up and obviously, you know, something needs to be done. People need to be talking to people. Um, but to start off on a personal note, um, if you don't know me on a personal level, if you only know me through YouTube and, uh, you know, maybe you, maybe you watch me on YouTube, well, obviously you watch me on YouTube, but if you're subscribed to me on YouTube, you've been watching me, you know, maybe from the beginning, maybe not, um, maybe you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you, uh, you've seen, you know, stuff that I've posted and you may think, oh, this girl looks like she has, you know, like a fairly good life. I'm not going to say perfect because obviously no one's life is perfect. Um, but even if, even if you know me on a personal level, what I post on social media, and I'm going to put examples, um, you know, this past year has been a very big and exciting year for me. You know, I graduated from university. That was a huge accomplishment for me. Um, just a few days later after that, I got married, you know, that was, that was awesome. That was amazing. I, I never would have thought that at the age of, you know, 21 that I was going to get married. So that, that was obviously like a huge step in my life and a milestone. Um, and then my husband and I bought a house. We moved in in December. You know, I never would have dreamt that I would be able to purchase my first home, let alone build my first home, you know, have it custom made. Um, and then I got, you know, my two greyhounds, you know, um, in November. And, 
you know, just from that, you may think, you know, like this girl, you know, her life looks pretty good. And from the outside, yeah, it does. And to be honest, I'm not trying to portray that my life has been, you know, terrible because you know what? It hasn't been. I've had a fantastic life. Or I, you know what? I am having a fantastic life, not have. Um, but you know what? Like, my life hasn't, you know, all been sunshines and rainbows. And you know what? Everyone's life hasn't been. But what people don't see on, you know, my Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Is that, you know what? I have dealt with stuff. And I've dealt with stuff, you know, from since a very young age. Um, from when I was little, I've always dealt with, you know, just constantly feeling like I don't measure up and being a perfectionist. Um, this was very apparent in school, especially when I got, you know, up to, you know, grade seven, eight, and then in high school and university, obviously. Um, you get a, an 80. Well, I should have gotten an 85. You get, you get an 85 the next time. Well, I could have gotten a 90. You know, like, the only time I was ever happy was when, you know, I got an 100. And then, therefore, I was deemed perfect, and I couldn't really do much better. Um, I dealt with this with my weight, you know, if I was X amount, you know, one day, oh, well, I should be two pounds lighter than that, and then I'll lose the weight, and then, oh, I should be two pounds, you know what I mean? Like, it just never was good enough. Um, so I always felt the need to control things in my life until they were deemed what I thought to be perfect. Um... And then, and then in high school, you know, like, I've been blessed with great friends and family. I've, uh, just, I've had such a great support system, and you know what, most of my friends don't know about, you know, what I've been dealing with. And you know what, to you, it may not even feel like a big deal, but the constant need to feel like you need to just control everything in your life, eventually it does start to wear down on you. Um, but anyways, I went to university my first year, and you know what, things were, you know, like, quite a bit better. I didn't feel as, I guess, like, so regimented, like I needed to control everything. I felt more, I wouldn't say go with the flow, because I've never been like that, and if you know me, I'm not a go with the flow type person. Um, but I felt a little bit more relaxed. And, uh, second year, you know what, I was fine too. And then I had something happen to me that was just completely, I, I, if someone told me that this was going to happen, I, I wouldn't believe them. And you guys probably know what I'm about to say. Um, so it was, it was August and I was working at my job. I was working there all day. I remember sitting, you know, on my break, just reading a book. I actually can remember what book I was reading. I was reading the new Lauren Conrad book. I forget what the title was called, but I was like on chapter two or something. I, the fact that I can still remember that blows me away. Um, and then I see my grandpa come in. I was just like, oh, that's kind of weird, but you know what, whatever, you know, maybe he's brought me supper because my grandparents, you know, they're always doing stuff for me. Um, and he goes to talk to one of the girls, and I thought that was weird that he didn't come up to me. And so, of course, I see him. I go right up to him. I say, oh, hi, you know, how are you? And he's like, we got to go. We got to go. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, there wasn't a smile on his face or anything. Like, his expression was just completely blank, and my grandpa is a fairly happy person. Um... And I was just like, why? No, like, I can't go. Like, I'm working. Like, what do you... And he, he just keeps saying, like, we gotta go, we gotta go. And the girl who I was working with kind of looked at me, and she didn't have a smile on her face. And so I was just like, what's going on? And he's like, we gotta go. And I was like, no, like, I can't just leave. What's going on? And he said that my dad had died. And I just remember screaming. I just remember, like backing up 
in like the main lobby of where I worked and just screaming. And then I remember employees coming out and I remember my manager coming out and my grandpa just keeps saying like, Allison, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I'm just like, no, no, no. Cause for some reason in my head, keep in mind, my dad was completely healthy. He didn't have any sickness at all. So this was the most shocking thing that ever happened in my life. And for some reason, I thought that if I, you know, I stayed at work and I continued my job, I was just so adamant on staying there that somehow, you know, this wasn't happening and my life was just going to go on perfectly fine, you know, the way that it was going. And then I realized it clued in, okay, I got to leave. But it's still like, I was freaking out, but it still didn't really click in. Keep in mind, this is like a matter of like five minutes. So I remember the girl, one of my coworkers, she, you know, like walked with me because I felt like I was going to faint to my locker room, you know, got my stuff and we went to the hospital. And on the way, I remember calling my husband, you know, saying what had happened. I, it felt so weird saying, you know, that my dad had died. Um, and he was obviously just like, what, what? Like I had to tell him a few times cause he didn't understand. Um, but he obviously said, I'll be there right away. So we go to the, to the hospital. And then I think stuff started to click in a bit. We went, uh, you know, into this back room, I guess it's like a grief room or whatever. I don't know. And there was, there was a grief counselor there and there's, and my mom was there, you know, obviously I don't want to share too, too much, but obviously distraught. Um, and yeah, and then the rest of the night, it was just telling, you know, immediate family what had happened and, and yeah, um, so yeah, I just, the last thing that I remember that I said to my dad was, my husband was over and we were on the couch and he just went up to bed and I didn't even see him, I just said goodnight. And then I had worked the next day entirely so I didn't, I didn't see him. Um, but just, it was just crazy how much my life had changed in, you know, a matter of a day. Like, it's, I, I, I can't even explain it. But anyways, I, afterwards, I, uh, obviously, it, it's, it's tough to deal with because he wasn't sick at all. And I'm not saying that if you have someone that you love or, or know that you know has a sickness and then they pass away I'm not saying that's any easier because it's not but this was just obviously so unex unexpected it took me quite a while to kind of accept and just get it through my head that you know like he's gone um but anyways I that happened in August and September I was in my third year of university and I wasn't gonna as hard as it was I wasn't gonna I wanted to not go back but I went back obviously because I knew that if I didn't that would really tick him off um, and I think it was probably good that I went back to school because it, it definitely gave my mind something to focus on instead of you know the loss and so yeah, so I went back to school and things, you know, September, October, November, Christmas, you know, it, it wasn't fun. It wasn't a good time, but the new year started and the wedding was happening. Well, I guess that was 2014. So yeah, we still had a year and a bit before we got married, but I was busy with, you know, planning the wedding and stuff. I was, I, I was busy and things, you know, I wouldn't say got better, but they kind of started to, you know, look up. I wasn't, you know, crying every night. Um, but I guess I had never really dealt with, you know, like obviously like I've been to funerals and I've had people in my family pass away, but to have your dad pass away when you're, how old was I? I had just turned 20. It was something that I never expected would happen. Um, so I guess I kind of expected that, you know, I've hit rock bottom when you find out the news, it really can't get much worse than this. And I guess I kind of just figured 
that it would kind of be like an uphill, you know, battle a bit, just, but slowly you'd like get better and you'd be able to move on, not, well, I guess move on with your life, still be sad, but yeah, be able to still, you know, have a life. And that's not the case for me at all. Like, I feel like I went up for a bit, but especially these past few months, and this is why I haven't been on YouTube for a while, um, I've just felt like it's just kind of went back down. Um, I just feel so sad all the time. And I hate admitting that, but, you know, it's, it's, it's the truth. I, I wake up and I don't want to wake up. I just want to stay in bed. You know, I just want to sleep all day. And I know that that's not healthy and I know that that's not how I want to live my life. But especially, you know, like even last week, like I just, I didn't have the motivation to get up and, you know, you know, just go and live your life. Obviously I did, but I'm just so sad, you know, like this is, this is turning into a bit of a pity party, which I didn't want the focus of this video to be. But anyways, going back to before this had happened and I was still like a very much uh, regimented, I guess, perfectionist type of a person. I feel like since, since this event, it's just gotten so much worse to the point where I feel like I need to control every little thing in my life and every, not everyone, but just, yeah, just try to control every little aspect in my life. And it's, it's getting tiring. And I think what's happened is because I obviously, I've accepted the fact that there's nothing that I could have done, you know, to not make my dad pass away. You know, that was completely out of my control. But I think since then, I feel like, oh, you know, I didn't have control in that situation. Now I feel like I'm going to try to, to the best of my ability, control every little bit of the rest of my life. <coughs> And I know that that's impossible. Stuff's going to happen in the future that's out of my control. But I still do it anyways. And last week, I just, it, w it was, it wasn't one of my best weeks. That's, that's, that's what I'll say. I was just really sad. And I just, it, w it was to the point where I just like didn't want to live pretty much. You know, like I just want to sleep all the time because that's the only time where I feel like I am actually relaxed. I'm never relaxed. I'm always tense. And, but anyways, enough of my personal story. What I'm trying to say is on the outside, I may look like I'm fine and I may look like I have a good life. I've, I'm not trying to brag, but everything that I've wanted, I've pretty much, you know, gotten, especially this year, you know, like I got a new job, I got a new house, I got married, I got a new car, you know, like from the outside, it looks like I have nothing to complain about, but obviously I would take away, I wouldn't take away my marriage, obviously, but Obviously, I'd take away my house, you know, my car, all the stuff that I bought, you know, just to have my dad back. <sighs> but that's not gonna happen. <sighs> but, I guess, what I'm trying to get at is, although everyone's life may look perfect, perfect, it's not. Everyone's fighting some sort of battle, whether it be big or it be small, everyone's dealing with something and not everyone has a fantastic day. And I am trying to take steps to, 
you know, work through this, obviously, because right now I am not the happiest person and I feel like I'm just wasting my life being miserable, but it's just so hard sometimes to wake up in the morning because the solution that I want being, you know, to have my dad back, it's, it's not going to happen. So I'm trying to figure out a way of how to, how to cope otherwise. And I just think that you know, I wake up and I, I literally feel like my world's just crashed, you know, like I feel like I have, you know, like what's the point of living, you know, if if my dad's not here, but you can't. You can't think like that. Because A he's He'd be so ticked off knowing how sad I am over this. And he would not want me to be living like this. And B, my life could be so much worse. You know, like I'm in good health. You know, my husband's in good health. My family's in good health. You know, like... I think it could always be worse, and that, that that's yeah, that's your little bit of, I guess, I guess to move on, you have to have, you know, faith that you know what no, your your whole life isn't going to be like this. You know, it's it. There, there's seasons, and that was a season of my life, and I'm still going through it. That you know is you know. A valley, but there's going to be, you know, hills and upward, you know, swings where, you know what, things are good. And that was when I got married, you know, that's when I moved into my house. That's when I got the girls, you know, so you just, you can't, I think my problem is I can't just think that, you know, it's just going to be like this now because it's not, it's like this pretty much, you know, um, I think the hardest thing through this loss is that I guess I could, I thought that I could just, you know, kind of box it away and oh, when I feel like dealing with that, I can deal with that, you know, at nighttime before I go to bed or whatever. But it's not like that. Sometimes you'll, I'll literally be like laughing with someone. Like we were, my husband and I were driving home last week. I was laughing, having a good time. I was, you know, like I wasn't miserable at the, it's all right, Mace. I wasn't, I, I was happy at that moment. Um, and then, this sounds stupid, um, but then the Taylor Swift song came on, the, oh shoot, we are never ever getting back together, and when it goes, wah, you know that, that video that they made of like the goat, of when she went, wah, the goat went, bah, or whatever, and it was hilarious. I remember my dad showing me that, and he thought it was just so funny. He would just play it over and over and watch it. Um, just it's 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 the little things that make it hard because they spring up on you and they like surprise you. And but yeah, so I realized that this, you know, I can't just expect that I'm gonna be fine with this for the rest of my life because I'm not. But my life isn't terrible. You have to have some type, you have to have hope and faith that it's gonna, you know, get better and that you have people in your life, regardless of what your situation is, that, that love you and care for you and would be really, really sad if you were ever to do anything because you just felt so hopeless and helpless and just depressed. Um, it's, it's not worth it. Like, go talk to someone. I talk to my husband all the time, and he's, he's so, like, good about it. Like, he's, he's never really had anyone, you know, super close to, like, like, he hasn't had a parent, you know, pass away, but, so we can't fully relate, but, you know, he's always there for me, which, you know, helps a lot. So... 
I know this wasn't a very happy video and I really don't want a whole bunch of comments saying, oh, I'm, you know, like, stay strong, da 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 da, like, I've decided that, you know, like, I have, I have to fight through this, you know, like, as sad as it is, you gotta move on and you've gotta, you've gotta find a way to live your life and not to feel like I need to control everything in my life due to that one event that happened that I had no power of being able to control that at all. And so it's hard. I Some days, you know what, I wake up and it's good. And some days I wake up and some weeks I wake up. And to be honest, this whole month has kind of just been a... Not very fun. Um, but I, I just think that no matter what you're going through, and I know there's people out there that are going through ten times worse stuff than what I've went through. You, you can't stop having hope and seeing light in your life that it's it's not all bad and that you're going to be able to work through this and things are going to get better and it's just a season in your life it's not your entire life so that's my video i know it's a little depressing but i've just felt like i needed to get this off my chest and especially with I just feel like I'm constantly bombarded with the news of people committing suicide in my community and it's just something needs to be done and people need to stop. People, I know it's hard to I know it's hard to do but and you may feel ashamed or embarrassed and to be honest like people that I know in my personal life um are probably going to be watching this and I'm kind of like Hmm, I don't know if I really want to post this because, you know, maybe they're going to judge me or whatever. But, you, you've got to talk to someone if you're battling whatever you're battling. Like, you have to talk to someone and open up to someone. It may not solve the issue, but whenever you feel really crappy in your situation, go talk to someone and you do feel better. And you know what? Maybe that person will be able to shed light on your situation or since they're looking at it from a different perspective, you know, figure out a way to start to fight through it, whatever it may be. So if you are dealing with whatever, maybe it's not a loss, maybe it's something else, go talk to someone if you haven't. And if you have, go talk to them again if you still feel not too good. I don't think mental illness should be stigmatized at all. Like, oh, like, they're just sad, you know, you're just having a bad day because sometimes people aren't just having a bad day. Sometimes people are having, like, a bad week or a bad month like I've had. But I do think that we need to, whatever you're battling, whatever, you need to fight through. And you can't just, you know, stay in this little, like, slum of, oh, I'm f uh, poor me, you know, pity Allison, you know, like. I feel so bad for myself, you know, like, that's not going to get you anywhere. And that's, that's why I said I don't want this to be a pity party because that's not going to do anything. I want to, I guess the purpose of this video for me is to shed some light on mental illness. And if anyone is dealing with anything, maybe this video will give you hope that it will get better because... Although these past few months have been difficult for me since my dad has died, they haven't all been terrible. You know, I have had fantastic things happen in my life since then. Um, right now, it's just kind of not the funnest season, I guess, but I know it's going to get better and that's the only thing that's really helping me get through this is that I know it's not going to be like this forever. It takes hard work, but it's obviously worth it and it's the best decision that you'll make to fight through it instead of just, you know, sitting in like a constant pity party. Um, so if you are dealing with anything, talk to someone. If you want to talk to me, private message me or comment. I don't care. Or, you know, like I, I'm going to leave a bunch of links down below of actual organizations that are probably a lot more qualified to deal with specific situations than I am. But if you don't have anyone to talk to, talk to me. 
I'll try my best to help if I can. Um, another thing is get involved with a group or something that you're passionate about. Um, my husband and I started going to a new church um, last year and I really, really like it. And one thing that I've always liked in my life was singing. So I decided to join the worship team and the first uh, time that I'm singing is this Sunday. And I sing my whole life, I perform my whole life, so singing in front of a bunch of people that I don't know, it doesn't phase me at all, to be honest. I'm not nervous at all, but the thing that's kind of looming over me, which I wish it wasn't, but it is, is the last time I performed was at my old church. It was during Christmas time a few, I was 19 or 20, so a few years ago, I'm almost 23. Um, and, and my dad was in the audience, and obviously now... He's not going to be, so that thought's just always in my head. And I know it's going to go well, and I know it's going to be fine. It's just, I think once I get over that first performance, I think I'll be fine. But I'm not going to let that, I don't know if I'd say if, if it's called a fear, but that thing that's bothering me, I'm not going to let that stop me from doing something that I love to do, which is to sing. Um, because that makes me happy, so... Yeah, get involved with a group of people and do something that you're passionate about. Maybe, you know, maybe you like sports or maybe you like to dance. I really like to dance as well. Um, or exercise. Exercise is so good for your brain. It definitely, you know, takes a load off. You know, if you're stressed, just go and run or go and lift weights or whatever. I can't lift weights. I'm, I'm like as strong as a chicken. Um, but get outside, you know, like do stuff. Don't just, I guess what I'm saying is don't just sit in your house and just, oh, poor me, you know. And I know some days you do that, and it's, sometimes it's, you know, necessary a bit, but, like, you got to push past it, I guess is what I'm saying. But I'm rambling on so much, and it's not even, like, I just keep repeating the same things. So I'm not even going to say, like, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, because... This wasn't a fun video to talk about, but I guess if this even helps one person in the entire world, I know, like, most people are probably going to watch this, but I guess that would, you know, make me happy. It's just to have one person, you know, just realizing that there's hope that their life is going to improve. And I can tell you it is going to be better, I know that for a fact.